It's the system which is mistaken. People are good people. Everybody is a good man inside. But the system is wrong, it's mistaken. It causes people to behave in an awkward way, in a schizophrenic way. Personally, I started to uh, study how to improve the level of human values in companies, to create courses, and I created leadership courses and human values courses for companies, which uh, I've been doing so until I have realized that unless you solve the monetary problem, you cannot change the ethics of companies. A company needs to survive. It's its first and foremost objective. If it can't survive because money is scarce, because uh, the, uh, there is this cutthroat competition, then it simply will not be ethical. It simply will try to squeeze workers as much as possible in order to survive. There are several things which are wrong for one thing, it is an anonymous money, an anonymous currency uh, can be stolen, can be used for corruption, uh, it can be used to build armies and, uh, and all that, it, it can be black or white or whatever you want. An, a nominal, a nominative, a nominative currency in which, uh, for instance, like a credit card. You know who is buying, who is selling. You can't corrupt anyone with a credit card. So this is one, one thing which is wrong and should be changed. But then there is the other problem. I interest is destroying the world. It's destroying the environment. Interest means that you have to return more capital than you were, than you were lent. And that means that you'll have to work more, which means you'll have to exploit more the resources. It means you have to grow just in order to pay the interest. And the interest is something that somebody else is earning without working, which is immoral. Uh, interest also is a tool that the central bank and the banking system um, is using in order to control the amount of money. But it's a wicked tool it's a tool that has problems in itself. If you use a 7% interest rate, for instance, which companies pay very often for the, for, the, for the money that they use, this means every 10 years you double your capital. That's 7%. Approximately, very approximately, it is double every 10 years. Now, imagine day one, we start with Euro. And we receive all this amount of money that we need to run our economies. And we are start paying an interest on, on that amount of money. Because it's not ours, it belongs to the financial system. After 10 years, we owe them, so the banking system, the financial system as a whole, can come theoretically and say, you have to give it back to me, because it is mine. It didn't cost them anything to produce in the first place because it's just writing numbers on a computer. But it is there and you have to return it. Now, of course, you can't return it because you need money to run the economy. So, no problem. We will postpone the devolution. So, 10 more years. But now, okay, we have postponed. But now you owe us an, another identical amount of money as interest. What do we do about it? Huh, we can't pay it. We have no money. No problem. We make another credit. So the debt increases. The debt of society as a whole, government, companies, every one of us increases the, the debt level just in order to pay this interest, which has as a meaningless interest. There shouldn't be any interest at all. It's obvious, obvious, because this money didn't cost anything. Then why are you paying anything for money that didn't cost anything to generate? It is immoral 
uh, from the moment that, that the financial system takes it seriously and it starts exacting, so asking for return and asking for interest in a very, very uh, uh, imperative way, saying even that the, the poor Greeks should sell their islands in order to repay uh, something that maybe it's theirs as much as it is everybody else's. But what can be done today? Today we believe that you can slowly introduce uh, alternative currencies. Why? Because with another currency you start by educating people. You uh, begin to make them think in terms of currency, in terms, in terms of the real nature of money, which they've never been taught, not at school, not at university. I'm finding that the people who find it more difficult to understand money are economists. No demerit to them. Very intelligent people. I know extremely intelligent people, economists. But they don't understand money in the first place because they never thought about it. They were instructed, they were given one very simple instruction. Money is neutral to the economy, which is an absolute falsehood. <laughs> money is central to the economy. But they were taught that it is neutral so that they don't think about it. I think capitalism, society at large, needs this kind of experiments. And they should be not only tolerated, they should be encouraged as much as possible. Even though they may look strange, maybe even though these people sometimes may look strange. <laughs> but <laughs> You, haven't, you, you mustn't be uh, distracted by the looks or by the words. The substance is what matters. We are trying new systems. It is obvious that the current system is not working any longer. It has gone to, the, to, this, to its limits and it is breaking apart. So uh, any solution, alternative solution that we find is worthwhile. So I work with them. Uh, I, I, I'm working with another system. Uh, at at the, the city I am living now, where we have a complementary currency. I am at the committee and we are learning all the problems, all the ethics of doing it in truly the best possible way. Because whenever you are uh, creating an exchange system, you are acquiring some amount of power and you have to handle it in the best interest of the community.